Michael, the one I shared bedrooms with growing up, the one that I fought with growing up, was just diagnosed with cancer. And if we went through the entire thing and how he went about the MRIs, all the tests that he had to go through. If we lived in Canada, he wouldn't know. He wouldn't know today that he had cancer and he wouldn't be getting the treatments that is going to save his life. Lou, thanks for the phone call. Guys, we got to take a break right here. This is Chris Markowski filling in for the great doctor, Dr. Michael Savage here at the Savage Nation. Hey, I want to remind everybody out there, the good doctor, once again, he's got another book that's coming out, and you know it. It's going to be another New York Times bestseller. You can pre-order it at his website at michaelsavage.com. Banned in Britain is the title. Pre-ordered at michaelsavage.com. Don't go anywhere. Take in your phone calls. 1-800-449-TALK. We'll be back. Savage. On the air, online, and on the go, this is Talk 910 KNEW. And welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. This is Chris Markowski doing all he can to fill in for the great Michael Savage. We got Robert on the line from Ohio. Disagrees with me. Robert, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Chris. How are you? Very good. I'm 66 years old. I'm a retired steel worker, and thank God for Ted Kennedy and their family. If you remember, three of them died serving their country, and Ted Kennedy, he helped protect Social Security, Medicare, and my pension. Uh, Republicans. They had to give me 10 pounds of potatoes at the end of the month. They never cared for the working man. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, now you're just pontificating. You're just using words. You're reading off some ridiculous thing. Help save your Social Security. Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. It's a Ponzi scheme. It is what it is, Robert. Hmm? It is a Ponzi scheme worthy of Bernie Madoff. In fact, if I was Bernie Madoff's lawyer, if I was Bernie Madoff's New York lawyer, as the great doctor would say, I'd go in and I'd say, hey, I give the Social Security defense. I give the Social Security defense. These people, the problem is, Robert, okay, and we're gonna, we can go back and forth for hours saying what the Kennedys did and how evil the Republicans are and how evil this one is. This is the problem. Our founding fathers, and if you read about how this country was founded, then you read the Federalist Papers, they wanted people to go and serve their country, go and serve their country, and then get out. Go home. Go back to the farm. Go back to their business. Why aren't you in Congress? What makes you any less bright than Ted Kennedy? The problem we have right now is we got a bunch of useful idiots, useful idiots there in Washington, D.C. Watch C-SPAN sometime. Chris Dodd, in charge of the banking committee. Has he ever worked in a bank? Does he know anything about banking? Has he ever held a real job in his life? Has he ever had to make payroll? Has he ever had to sign the front of a check, come up with a marketing plan? No. What we have, what we have in this country, 98, 99% of the people in Congress went to college, went to law school, went to Washington. We need to have a reset button. We need to get some of these people out. Now, I'm not saying that everything that Ted Kennedy did was bad or wrong by any stretch of the imagination. But he's not this God that they're making them out to be. He's not. Security check? What's that? You're going to get a pension, Social Security check? Uh, no, I'm not going to get a Social Security check. I'm 38 years old. Social Security is not going to be around when I'm going to get it. It's not going to be there. Uh, it's now. impossible. It's impossible. I'm not going to get a Social Security check. And I tell all of my people, all my clients, the same thing. If you're in your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s, up to 50, don't expect on getting Social Security. In fact, you have no legal right to Social Security. Fleming versus Nestor, 1963, Supreme Court case. They could cancel Social Security tomorrow, and you could be left with nothing. A Ponzi scheme is a Ponzi scheme. And I don't think we should be taking anybody's Social Security money away. But we certainly need to have some reform. When the Social Security was de uh, designed, and the mortality rate in this country was under 50 years old, it's most certainly different today when it's 78 years old. I mean, this is just simple math. Anyway, thanks for the call, Robert. Uh, we got Barbara on the phone from Ohio as well. Barbara, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yes, hello, Chris. I just wanted to say you're absolutely right about Ted Kennedy not being popular in flyover country. I'm from Ohio, and we judge people by what they do, not by what they say. 
And when he left that young woman to die alone in that car, submerged in the water, and left her there for hours, he defined himself, and he did not redeem himself in the rest of his life. So let them name the health care bill after him, and it will be another nail in the coffin of the health care bill. No pun intended. Yeah, I'm right with you, Barbara. I said let them go. Just let them keep doing what they're doing because they keep stepping in it every step. Away. Let them keep talking. Let the, oh, let need the bill after Kennedy. Go ahead. See if that's a real good sales point. Great point, Barbara. Thanks for the phone call. We got another call here on the line. We've got Brian from Mississippi. Brian, welcome to the Savage Nation. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. No, I couldn't agree with you more on the Social Security. Uh, I want all my Social Security money back, if possible, or not to put, have to put any more into it. But well, well, one second. Can I, can I put, make a real quick point? I wrote a column about this years ago. Social Security, you've got to think about this for a second. If an investment advisor presented the Social Security plan to you, the SEC could put him in jail. That's how bad this plan is. The government is forcing you, taking your money, telling you that they're investing it in some sort of prudent manner, which they do not. There is no Social Security trust fund. There is a file cabinet in West Virginia filled with IOUs. It's like that movie Dumb and Dumber. When they got the IOUs in the box. Brian, I didn't mean to interrupt you. We got to take a break right here. Stay with me. I'll get back to your point when we get back from the break. You are listening to the Savage Nation. I'm not the good doctor. This is Chris Markowski filling in for him. Make sure you get to Michael's website, michaelsavage.com. We'll be back. With Savage, you never know what to expect, and that's why you listen to his show every day. The Savage Nation. Talk 910 KNEW. Welcome back to the all-powerful Savage Nation. I'm Chris Markowski, filling in for the good doctor today. We're going to go back to Brian in Mississippi. Brian, I'm sorry I interrupted you there, but I had to get that point across. I sometimes get ADD, and i got to get some points across, but thanks for calling the program. Uh, no problem. Can you, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you loud and clear. Okay, well, I just want to make sure that everyone knows, you know, that he's a son, son of a gangster, an unprosecuted killer, and to make him out to be a hero is a travesty. I don't yeah, understand it. Most people don't realize that. The reason why, the reason why uh, Joe Kennedy, his father, was put in charge of the Securities and Exchange Commission, the original Securities and Exchange Commission, was because he was a financial crook and he could actually find out who the crooks are. Which was kind of smart, if you think about it, because that's what they should be doing today. They just start employing some of these, these crooks like they do with the uh, computer hackers. But you're right on, Brian. Right on. And you know what? Let's see if that's talked about. Let's see if there's any coverage of that whatsoever. Thanks for the call. We got Michael on the line from Albany, New York. And the reason why I go to you, Michael, I'm from Albany, New York. Welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you very much, Chris. It's a pleasure to hear your voice. Ted Kennedy... I think is the, one of the most despicable human beings that lived way too long. This man should have gone, not Mary Jo Kopechny. She should have lived. There should have been a reversal. He has destroyed this country. This health care system, they still don't get it to this day. A rally after rally, they think we're not going to stand up. Well, we yeah, well can I, Michael, let me, let me cut you off real quick. And you said something. You said he destroyed this country. Now, I'm someone, and this is my belief, that whenever there's something wrong, if I do something wrong at work or something bad happens, I always look myself in the mirror and I say, where did I screw up? I think, it's, I think you're giving this man too much power by saying that he screwed up the country. Who screwed up the country are not the politicians. It's we the people. Because we're the ones that continue to put these people into office. The same names, the same faces, year after year. How does this guy continue to get elected year after year after year? So whatever he does, it's our fault. You following me? Well, I'm following to a certain point. Remember, I'm not a liberal. You're not a liberal. The liberals, the people that get sucked in with the lies. See, what I'm, I'm driving at is the lies of the entire Kennedy clan. They built them up for Camelot, for these superhuman beings. They were nothing. They were, they were, he, was, he was an animal, John Kennedy. He never stayed with his wife, but they go through that. Joe Kennedy sold guns, 
sold liquor, was into prostitution. That's how he made his money. Yeah, wiretap Martin Luther King. I, there's, there's a ton of stories, and none of this stuff comes to the forefront, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, Michael Savage, Dr. Michael Savage, came up with one of the most brilliant phrases ever. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Now, I tried to attempt to, to explain in my program what liberalism is all about. Now, if you ever happen to be with a liberal and you happen to get a couple drinks in them, they're going to actually explain to you, Michael, the way that they think and the way they believe. And there's, I believe that there's two different types of liberals. There's the type of liberal that is an elitist, believes that he or she is better than everybody else, and it is their duty, it is their calling to rule, to tell you what to do, to manage your lives, because they're brighter, they're smarter, and they're better than you. And there's the other type of liberal who just goes along with it and wants to be taken care of, that doesn't want to be responsible for their own health care, that doesn't want to be responsible for their, for their own lives, is more concerned with watching